Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson, this is Maker Size. In this episode, I'll be making a lathe dog and turning raw cast aluminum bars into machine cylinders. To make the lathe dog, I cut some little V's into some 5 8 by 5 8 cold rolled steel, and then I drilled and tapped holes in uh, one side, and I just drilled a through hole in the other side. I use the through holes to help me align the tap. Uh, when tapping the side that received the threads. A lathe dog is basically just a clamp that allows you to tighten up on a cylinder. The cylinder is placed between centers, which are pretty much just pointed cones on the inside of the headstock and the inside of the tailstock. When it's in between those centers, it's free to rotate. However, when you put the lathe dog on it, you can clamp down on it and then drive the piece in between the centers using the faceplate. Initially, I didn't have the tailstock spindle sticking out far enough from the tailstock casting. I ended up running the carriage into the tailstock base, so I had to scoot the tailstock over, hammer the tailstock ram out, and that way I had enough clearance for the carriage to travel the length of the part that I was turning. I release project videos early to Makersize email subscribers. If you want early access, go to makersize.com slash sign up. If I get too carried away with a deep cut, I end up stalling the spindle because the belt starts to slip. So what I'm doing here is checking for parallelism, and that's to make sure that the tailstock end matches the radius that it's cutting on the headstock end. So that means the two sides, the front and the back of the piece that you're turning are, are parallel. The process for doing that is I will unlock the tailstock end, and I don't loosen it up completely, I just loosen it up just a hair. Uh, and then in this case, because the headstock end is larger, the tailstock end I want to back away from the cutting tool, and that way it leaves a larger uh, diameter. 
Another thing that I've done is I've moved the belt over. Both the spindle and the carriage are moving much quicker. That kind of cuts down on the time. Plus it also leaves a uh, much ni nicer surface finish. Now just looking at this, uh, what I believe has happened is I've actually made the tailstock end smaller in diameter because it doesn't seem to be cutting as much off the headstock end. So I probably did indeed make this work. So again, I'm going to loosen this bad boy. And then I'm going to tighten up this end. It's about two and a half thousandths bigger on that side. I want this end to go back. That means I'm going to loosen the front and I am going to tighten the back. Hopefully those chips get thicker towards the headstock end. I've gotten out the dial indicator and uh, one of the things that I noticed was that it was a little loose here on the tailstock end. So what I do is I loosen up this clamp a little bit and I just give the tailstock a little bit of a tap to try to get it, keep it tight on the uh, tailstock end of the workpiece. So no sense trying to chase half a thousandth if they're slopping the piece. And that looks like about it. Let's see if it moves any when we tighten this guy up. I'm sure it will. Well, I guess that's, uh, we're going to try that. Now we're 4,000 bigger on this end, so I'm definitely chasing this number. I need to do, I need to go two thousandths this direction. All right, well that's just about spot on two thousandths back. So since I'm four thousandths out in diameter from one end to the other, this end was four thousandths large, scooting this Dang it, I think I went the wrong direction yet again. So now we're approximately 10 thousandths bigger on this end. So I, I had to have gone the wrong direction. Okay, finishing up the next round, I move this forward 5 thousandths to make this a smaller diameter. Just about to finish up this cut. Done. All right, now let's see what it see what we get here. It's a pretty thick cut. Looks like we took off about ten thousandths in diameter. Okay, so now we'll move it back two and a half thousandths. Okay, again, kind of frustrating. Uh, apparently, I moved it this direction two and a half three thousandths. I need to get this guy back by six and a half thousandths. So let's see if I can actually do that this time. <laughs> I did it again. This is, <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, do we have any guesses as to whether or not I sent this thing the right direction this time? Six thousandths over on this side. It's two thousandths over on this end. Uh, so I'm going to move the headstock up by one thousandth. So I need to move this end back by less than one. See how this works out. Same drill. So I've spent some time uh, chasing uh, a couple thousandths I've got it back down to a little less than one thousand. The headstock end is just a tad bit thicker, but seems to fit pretty well. The micrometer there. The other end is a tad on the loose side, but uh, 
best I can tell it's about a little less than a thousandth. I decided to go ahead and stop after getting it within one thousandth of an inch uh, from the headstock to the tailstock end. And after going through these exercises, I felt like I had a pretty good idea of how to get the tailstock adjusted for turning a straight cylinder. In subsequent videos, I'll show you how I use turning between centers and the lathe dog to make the tailstock ram feed screw. I hope this video inspires you to exercise your inner maker. If you enjoy this project series, consider supporting me on Patreon. That's a really great way to help out and uh, sharing and commenting are also a big help as well. So thanks for watching.